So, did you own Lego when you were a kid? Of course I owned Lego. We had Kinex, oh. Meccano and Lego all in the same box. And the thing about Meccano is, it's got those tiny little bolts and they always got lost right at the bottom of the thing so we couldn't make any Meccano. So what we actually had was Lego, Kinex and tiny little metal things you could wing at your brother's head. <laughs> The Lego Movie was pretty awesome, so we're going to gush about it now for a few minutes while also talking about how they scanned in actual Lego bricks to make everything in that movie look just right. Yeah, the Lego Movie was a bit of a sleeper here, wasn't it? No one expected it to be the that, the cultural juggernaut it was. That was an absolute beast of a movie. It just decimated the box office. It was the fact that... Like, no, first of all, no one expected it to be good, but no one expected it to be that good. Yeah, you could look at it and you think, well, it's got some good actors behind it, so it could probably be kind of funny. I think I watched it twice in the cinema because one, it was just a really good movie, and two, it was so visually impressive. Oh, yeah. Hang on, sir! What are you doing? Let's fly! Whoa. And then you compare it to something like the Emoji movie, which was obviously released as a direct response to it by Sony thinking, well, the Lego movie did all right, and that's just about a pre-existing like piece of source material. Sure, the Emoji movie will work, not realising, I think, a conversation we've had many times before, where it's, the movie didn't succeed because it's about Lego. It's not just invoking the same, it succeeded because it's a well-made movie. And I don't get how that's such a hard concept for anyone in Hollywood to understand. Movies don't succeed based on concepts mm. or ideas. They succeed because they're good movies. This is such a load of... Uh... No, go ahead. Finish that sentence. According to the company behind the CGI in the Lego movie, Animal Logic, everything you see on screen, with the exception of the final live-action sequence, was accomplished entirely with CGI. This might not sound like something a company would brag about in this day and age, until you realise that when the trailer for the movie dropped in 2013, arguments erupted across the internet about whether or not it was real. I know what you're thinking. He is the least qualified person to lead us. And you are right. So I've got masters in visual effects. Even I thought it was stop motion. A lot of people did. And that's what I think is the beauty of this film, where you look at it and you go, is it CGI? Is it stop motion? Is it a combination of both? So you can clearly tell it's CGI in um, the bigger set pieces, where like the car chase and that sort of thing. But some of the more sort of mundane scenes, even just walking to and fro, and like the one where he's getting coffee or just sat on his couch, you can look at that and you you wouldn't be like remiss to thinking, yeah, that's that's just stop motion footage. And no, it's all CGI. Well, we all know how Lego moves. We've all played with Lego. I mean, they match the movements. Well, that's because they scanned in actual Lego pieces yeah. and they watched, I think, hundreds and hundreds of hours of actual stop motion footage of Lego to figure out what makes these move the way they do. Because footage of Legos moving in stop motion is very distinct and it's its own kind of movement. It's obviously. Lego figurines can only move in a specific way. Like the scene where he wakes up and he has to stretch in the morning. I think that's the best example of that. Jumping jacks, hit him. One, two, three. I am so pumped up! It would have been really easy to put in over exaggerated movements so or like make him bend. Like the idea is like it, animation always has that like elasticity to it. But no, none of that in the Lego movie, and that's what makes it so visually distinct. And it's one of the reasons it's really difficult to look at in certain scenes and go, is, is that just not real Lego? To make all of the Lego bricks seem the movie look as realistic as they possibly could, Animal Logic went to the effort of scanning individual Lego bricks to put them into the movie. Which is why, if you look closely, you can see things like thumbprints, dirt, and smudges on certain things. And that's why, if you look at um, you know, the older pieces, they've got realistic wear and tear. Like the Spaceman has got a little crack here. Yeah. And uh, they actually went to Lego and said, well, let's get an example of this piece. And they said, yeah. Historically, this piece most was cracked a lot because of um, uh, uh, a manufacturing defect or something in the way it was built. So they put that in. What? And as well, to make it look more like stop motion, they also didn't put any motion blur in any scenes. Getting screenshots of the Lego movie is a piece of piss because every screenshot looks fucking amazing. Because if you pause it at any point, there's no blur. It's just, a, it's, it's so good. The coffee shop one, I think, if that was a Lego set, someone would buy it, because obviously people like Lego. Drink overpriced coffee. There you go, that's $37. What awesome! But it's like when you see those um, play sets for kids, and have you seen the McDonald's one? Do you know like the, you get the play kitchens for kids? There's a McDonald's fucking play center. Actually sponsored by McDonald's, like, oh, 
So obviously when kids make believe and play, it's like, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a policeman, I want to be a soldier, I want to be a fairy princess. And it's like, I want to be the guy who fucking flips the burgers at McDonald's. Like, there's no problem with that as a career. It's fine, it's, it's a job. But when you're a kid, like the idea that a child aspiration will be to work at McDonald's, that's depressing as all fuck. Do you know what I wanted to be when I was a kid? What? A burglar. So we got burgled once when we were a kid and he nicked all of our CDs and movies. My mum was really sad. Uh, mum, when I grow up, I want to be a burglar because if because what I can do is I can steal them back and make you happy. Oh, that's adorable. I'm not a burglar, by the way. I dropped that dream. Everything you see in that film was realised using CGI. Now, just for a second, imagine how difficult it must be to put together a Lego set without instructions on a computer while simultaneously resisting the urge to build a giant dong. An example of the kind of effort Animal Logic were willing to go to to make everything in the movie look as realistic as possible. At one point, they were debating putting actual serial numbers on every piece of Lego seen in the movie. Fortunately for the people who had to render the movie, they decided against this when they realised that even pedantic assholes like us wouldn't notice something like that. The fact they even thought about doing that and then realised, hang on, no one was going to care that much. What was I just thinking? I don't care. Just for a second though, take a moment to appreciate the effort that went into making this movie. And the Animal Logic at one point genuinely thought about putting individual serial numbers on every single Lego brick, just so that pedantic assholes like us on the internet would argue about whether or not it's real. Great. I think I got it, but just in case, tell me the whole thing again, I wasn't listening. <gasps> Fortunately guys, like making videos costs a lot of money, so we've been forced to do this. And I always said that I would make the channel for free as long as possible, but we do need your support. So if you'd like to support the channel financially, you can bury some money in a box and then write the coordinates in the comment section and I'll go dig it up at a later date. Right, let's just, let's just say, like, how many people watching this do you think actually thought we were going to do a Patreon plug? <laughs> Are you familiar with the story of the, like, the ill-fated Lego MMO? I'm not, no. They basically, during Minecraft got big, I think in around 2015, they tried to build this thing called Lego Universe. And the idea was, it was just, you build whatever you like using Lego instead of, like, square blocks. The problem was... <laughs> Lego as a company were very insistent that you shouldn't be able to build penises. Which obviously you can't stop people doing that. You give any, you give a man a piece of chalk, he'll draw a penis. It's the, it's, it's the way the world works. The people working on that game were told from higher ups at Lego, build dong detecting software. <laughs> there was a quote from someone who worked on it where we were told to make this work and we couldn't make it work on any possible scale because no matter what we did we would find a way around it and would just build a bigger penis and then build a more obtuse one <laughs> so I don't even know what's happening to I don't know if the game ever went anywhere I think it went into early access on Steam and then died a fucking death because you couldn't build penises because it was probably really restrictive in what you could build <laughs> but it's one of those things where you give people ultimate creative freedom. They're going to build a dong. That's going to happen. People are going to build giant swastikas in it. You can't stop it from happening. It's going to happen. And the more you try and stop people, the more they're going to do it. I have this mental image that it was this constant battle between the creators and well, the... that's what uh... it was. It's like, do you ever know the game Spore? Yeah. Where people try to build the giant dong creatures in that. <laughs> the effort people went to to make penis creatures in that game was astounding. I am consistently amazed by man's ability to dis put penises into things where they're not supposed to be. So I, I was going to write an article on this, and I've pitched this to every site I've ever written for, and every single one has turned it down for being too rude. And it was the most crazy ways people have ever drawn penises. <laughs> one of them is that Lego thing. Another one is the, there was a girl who on her morning jogs would design her jogs to just draw huge dongs. Oh, so she'd, the, she'd run in dong shape? Yeah, do you know the, foot, um, the Fitbit app you get? Yeah. So when it uploads it, it just a big dong. <laughs> there was another one, there's this unnamed pilot who for no reason, just randomly when people were tracking flights, went out in his little private plane, flew in a giant three mile dong and then landed. <laughs> there was a kid who drew a giant penis on his parents' house roof and he saw it on Google Earth so he could find his house on Google Earth easier. Oh, <laughs> there's better like... things to draw than a dick. <laughs> there's so many of these, and they're all brilliant, and every site I've tried to pitch the idea to has gone. It's funny, but we can't do it because the images we'll use 
won't be safe for work and we have to keep that in mind when you're writing stuff. I think, Carl, you've now pushed the idea for your second ebook from this channel. <laughs> Number one, asking athletes of antiquity. Number, Number two, two, most creative ways people have drawn penises. Oh, it consistently amazes me how much effort people go at to do this stuff. Like that Lego MMO one, um, please just put some quotes down here from the person who worked on it who was like, we were told, stop people making penises. We couldn't stop people making penises. The harder we tried, the harder the penises we had. I get the feeling they put in like this rudimentary programming to detect, <laughs> to, to detect the shaft the, of balls. The general shape. Then of... they did a flat one. So they put in one to detect that. Then they did like a bent one. And what about one you can only view from a certain angle? <laughs> I think the best one I've ever heard is the game... What is it now? Uh, Journey. The game where you got uh, uses no dialogue and it's you guide the person through the level. There were people who were guiding people through that game, taking them to snow-covered mountains and then running in the shape of a penis. <laughs> so they were guiding people through a virtual landscape, beholding the splendour of this beautifully built virtual world to draw a huge dick and then jump around like an asshole. <laughs> the effort people were going to... There's a, a clip I've seen of this dude who's playing like Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2, which had the final siege of Gondor, whatever it was. He designed his all of his army to be in the shape of a penis. And he put all of his cavalry in the balls. And he put the main armaments at the top. So when they br an enemy broke through the tip, the balls would rush forward through the shaft. <laughs> it's so stupid. And I love it. I love it. Never stop doing it. It's like I used to do roller coaster tycoon and just build the Joe, like you build the two loop the loops and then they go up like that. So it'd be a loop the loop and then a big loop like that and then another loop the loop. So when you looked at it from the right angle, it's a huge doll. What was that coaster called, Carl? <laughs> what do you think it was called? It was called Carl's Dick. Then you can click and see what are people thinking about. People thinking about Carl's Dick. Carl's Dick looks too intense for me. Carl's Dick is great value. Carl's Dick made me feel sick. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.